My heart content, my soul at peace, my life in you. Love released. My heart with deepest joy abounds. Our voice is free with heaven sound. service with the difference it is the 14th of april 2024 um, we are in the season of easter and again easter is the season that stretches from resurrection sunday all the way up until pentecost where we celebrate the pouring out of the holy spirit on the believers um, and it is in the season of easter every year we we look at what it means to be a resurrected people you know we have died to to ourselves and we have been we have been raised to newness of life with christ we have died with christ we are raised to newness of life with Christ, we are already living our eternal lives. We're not waiting for death to live our eternal lives. We're already living our eternal lives. And so this year specifically, we are looking at what it means to remain in Christ. How do we know we have remained in Christ? You know, it's easy to fall in love with somebody, very different story, staying in love with somebody. It's easy to fall in love with God, very different story, staying in love with God. Um, and so how do we know we are staying in love with God? How do we know we have remained in in Christ, as Jesus says to disciples in John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches, remain in me, and I will remain in you. And today we are looking at how we will know we have remained in Christ by the fact that we have Christ's peace with us. And so we ask the question today, where, where does your peace come from? John 14, verse 27, Jesus, talking to his disciples, says to them, I give you my peace. I don't give you peace in the same way that the world gives you peace. Our pieces are very, very different pieces. With my peace, you, you don't have to be, you don't have to be afraid. And so we ask the question today, where, where does your peace come from? Because that will determine um, whether you have remained in Christ or whether you have remained in the world. 
Today we are going to be reading from Psalm 4, and Psalm 4 is a psalm in which the psalmist is crying out for, for God's mercy, and and they affirm that they know that their peace and and their security in, in this world can only come from God. Now we're also going to be reading from Acts chapter 3, we're going to read from verse 12 to verse 19, where, where Peter is responding to, to the people who are asking him about how he was able to, to heal the beggar at, at the temple. Um, and he calls them to to repentance. He says that the Jesus that you killed, he is the one who brings healing to, to this man through us. Now we're also going to be reading through 1 John chapter 3. You can read from verse 1 to verse 10, um, where, where John speaks of how God is love. And so as his children, we should be reflecting God. We should we should also be loved because we carry the resemblance of God. And then we are going to be reading from Luke 24. We're going to read from verse 36 all the way through to verse 48. Um, and this is Luke's version of Jesus appearing to the disciples after he has risen from the dead on the first night of the week when he appears to his disciples. Um, he says to them again, peace be with you. He eats some fish with them because he says he's, he's a little bit hungry. He hasn't eaten for three days. Um, and then he opens up scripture for them and explains how all of this has been spoken of in scripture, has been foretold from scripture. Um, and again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings first. And as we read through them, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he bless them to us as we reflect on them in, in this moment. As we read today from from. 1 John, 1 John chapter 3, John, John says it so beautifully as he, he tries to put into words his, his joy um, that, that God has deemed it good to call him a child of God. He says, you know, how great, how great is God's love for us? How great must God's love be for us that God would call us his sons and daughters, that God would call us his children. And he says, and God calls us his children because, because that's what we are. And so as his children, should we not then bear resemblance to God? All of us come from parents, from a mother, from a father. Um, they are all there. And, and in many different ways, we, we bear resemblance to our parents. People can see our parents in us. You know, the, the way we speak or, or the expressions that we have in our face or our attitude to life um, or, or just the way that we look or all of that. Um, any of that bears resemblance to our parents and people can see our parents in it. And so as children of God, what is it in our lives that bears resemblance to God? What, what is it in our lives that people can see God in us and, and, and through us? How, how would I know for myself that I bear resemblance to God? How would others know that I am bearing a resemblance um, to, to God? What, what would it need to look like? For us to know that we, we we bear God's resemblance, would it would it look like us lavishing love on on each other as God lavishes us with love? Would it would it look like us being at peace with each other as Jesus gives His peace to to the disciples? Would it look like us making peace with each other by by forgiving each other as God has made peace with us by by forgiving by forgiving us? And I want to suggest today that we will know that we are loved by God. We will, we will know that we love others. We will know that we bear resemblance to God by the way in which we know Christ's peace with us. Because, because that's what Christ gives to everyone who calls on his name. He, he says to him again, John 14, I don't give you peace in the same way the world gives you peace. My peace is, is within you. My peace surrounds you and my peace flows flows out of you into into this world. My peace changes the world. And so he says to the disciples, may, may you have peace within you. Um, he comes into the room, they're petrified. He says, peace be with you. And when he says that, the, the language that he uses to say that is, may you have peace within you. Um, may you know, in other words, that, that God loves you, that God has made peace with you. May you know the peace that passes all of understanding. May you know the peace that comes from, from being secure in, in the love of God, being content with, with God's presence. May you know the peace that comes from having no walls between you and God. And so Jesus says to the disciples, he says to them, peace, peace be with you. And as he says these words, as he says these words, we remember that he is saying them to a group of disciples who are filled with doubt. 
they're filled with doubt about everything that they have lived through, everything that they've experienced in the last three years. They're filled with, with doubt about, about everything that Jesus has has done, everything that he has taught, because Jesus then went and and died. They are filled with, with guilt because they deserted him. They are filled with guilt because they, they denied him. They are filled with guilt because they're afraid. And they're afraid that they are going to be captured. They're afraid they're going to be crucified because they were followers of, of Jesus. They are filled with guilt because the one who they followed, the one, the one who they have loved, the one that they placed their hopes in, has been killed. And, and what makes it difficult for the disciples to deal with all of these emotions that they're experiencing is the testimonies of the woman. It's the testimony of the two disciples who, who Jesus met on the road to Emmaus. You know, the disciples that Jesus speaks to are struggling because they, they're not even able to mourn properly. You know, it's, it's hard to find closure. It's hard to move on when people all around you keep on telling you that Jesus is, is not dead. No, no wonder the disciples are all doubting. Um, and, and the question is, have we, have we not all doubted? Have we, have we not all doubted something in our faith? Have we not all questioned our faith? Doubt, doubt is not a bad thing. Fear is not a bad thing when, when it prompts us to, to search for answers. And, and God is faithful. And God wants to give his, his children peace. And so he responds to our searching. He responds to our doubts. Christ doesn't condemn the disciples for, for doubting. He doesn't condemn the disciples for, for not believing. You know, he continues to talk to them. He continues to, to explain to them. He continues to show them um, how this is the fulfillment of, of all of Scripture. He, he continues to be present with them until the penny drops for them. And, and, and he does this for us in the same way when we, when we are searching for him. Doubt, doubt is not the problem when it comes to faith. Indifference is the problem when it comes to, to our faith. You know, with everything that is happening in, in our world around us, with everything that is happening in, in our country, with everything that is happening in our neighborhoods, you know, the corruption, the, the violence, the murder, the, the political unrest, the social unrest, and, and that's expressed in, in, in people's war against each other, hoping, you know, that it's going to make it better, but, it, but that can never make it better. Um, the, the way in which people want to express power and authority over others at, at all costs, all of this, you know, it, it wouldn't be out of line asking, where is Jesus in all of this? It wouldn't be out of line asking why God is not doing something when his promise of abundant life and his promise of salvation for, for all nations doesn't, doesn't seem to be making a difference to, to anything. And again, it's, it's not a bad thing to doubt. It's not a bad thing to, to be afraid. But it is a bad thing when we stop at doubt. It is a bad thing when we stop at, at fear. Because, you know, when, when the things that, that we are questioning, just when we can't find answers or, or when the things that we're afraid of, it's just too much for us to be able to deal with, then, then our survival instinct turns doubt and fear into indifference. We cannot find the peace of Christ when we stop at doubt. We cannot find the peace of Christ when we stop at fear. We find the peace of Christ when we engage God on the things that we have questions with. When, when we speak to God about the things we're afraid of. Because when we, when we have the conversation with God, we are opening our hearts to the presence of God. And we're just saying, God, our spirits are saying, God, I, I need you to be present to me. And when, we, when we're open to God and, and we become aware of the presence of God, we have the peace of Christ that is beyond our doubts, that is beyond fear. And so we, we can't stop at doubt. We can't stop at fear because we need to engage with God on those things we doubt. We need to engage God on, on those things we're afraid of because that's how God gives to us his peace. I do think, though, that as believers, you know, sometimes we don't move forward because we're afraid to engage God on, on certain things because we're afraid that God is going to point out our role in the current state of affairs and and either we're afraid that it's that it's too too bad and god can't forgive us or we're afraid that god is going to challenge us on that stuff and 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 we're going to have to let go of that stuff that we're hanging on to that is creating and and helping create the current state of affairs and so and so if any of the the above is true for you um here's the good news in in the gospel reading today it's it's in the middle of this internal turmoil that the disciples are experiencing in the middle of the external turmoil that that the disciples experience that christ enters into the room and he says to them peace be with you um 
And as he continues to explain, he says, repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in, in my name. Because if I died for you, you know, if I was raised from the dead for you, then, then I will forgive your sins when, when you repent and, and you will know my peace. And so the question for us as believers is, is there something that disturbs your peace? And again, happiness, happiness doesn't equate to peace. Is there, is there something that disturbs your peace? Is there a conversation that you need to have with God? Is there something you need to leave with God? Is there something you need to let go of so that the peace of Christ can, can be within you, so that the peace of Christ can, can fill you? Because as, as a believer, as those who, who get their peace from Christ, not, not from the world, as those who get their peace from Christ, we, we become bearers of God's peace. I will know that I love God by the way in which I love others. You know, when, when I have remained in Christ, when I get my peace from Christ, when I have the peace of Christ within me, then the world will know the peace of God with me. The world will know the peace of God because of me. God's work in me can't, can't leave me unchanged. It should affect the way that I think. It should affect the way that I experience the world around me. It should affect the way that I live. It it should affect the way that I see myself as the center of the universe. Um, because when I have the peace of Christ within me, I will know that it is no, no longer I that live, but Christ that, that lives in me. Having the peace of God within me should affect the way I receive the love that God has lavished on me and how I witness to that love that has been lavished on me. Having the peace of God within me should affect the way that I see my, my struggle with sin. It should affect the way that I see how my selfishness and my rebellion brings hurt and, and pain to, to other people. We are not by nature beings of peace. You know, we, we desire peace, but we only want peace on, on our own terms. We can, we can live at peace with the world as long as the world agrees with us. If the world doesn't agree with us, we are going to argue until one of us changes our definition of the way that, that things should be. We, we will betray trust. We will fail to care for each other. We will, we will refuse to, to forgive each other. We will refuse to take responsibility for our actions. We will, we will try and justify our actions. We will, we will hang on to our anger. We will hang on to our grudges. It is, it is Christ who brings peace. And he brings peace that comes from asking for forgiveness. He, he brings peace that comes from extending forgiveness um, to, to others. And, and Jesus, as he is referring to scripture, verse 46, 47, in, in the reading from Luke today, Jesus says, scripture has said that the Christ will suffer and he will rise from the dead on the third day and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to, to all nations. And, and he says to the disciples, you, you are witnesses of these things. This this is a part of your testimony, your forgiveness, your peace that you have received now, the peace that God has given you. Jesus is saying to his disciples, the peace I have given to you, that, that is a part of your testimony. That is a part of your story. God has made peace with you, and that peace will be realized so much more when you, when you learn how to share that peace with the world around you. Um, the place you get your peace will determine how you connect with the world around you. If you get your peace from the world, you are going to bear resemblance to the world. If you get your peace from God, you will bear resemblance to God. Where do you get your peace from? Whose resemblance do you bear? Pray with me. Lord God, somehow we are always surprised when you do what you do. We're surprised when you convict us of your love for us. We're surprised when we experience joy in moments when we have no reason to be joyful. We are surprised when we have peace within us that, that just that makes no sense. We ask only, Lord God, that you would help us to reflect your glory so that the world may see you through the way in which we share your peace with a world that hungers for it. May we be instruments of your peace, Lord God, in, in all the spheres of our life. When, when through the power of your Holy Spirit, we bring your peace into the middle of the turmoil of this world. May we bear your resemblance as we share your peace with the world. We pray this in your precious name. Amen.